Hi folks, it's Sikurzo here again, and this is the second part in my painting a Crick's Army video series. If you remember from last time, we had just finished using the AK Interactive Heavy Chipping Fluid to complete the initial weathering across the warjacks, and I'm now going in uh, to do some more weathering and build up the layers of weathering uh, to give you, for want of a better word, more realism. So what I'm doing here is I'm using some Vallejo game colour charred brown and I will be using some model colour black and I'm taking a sponge from the uh, sponge you get in blister packs uh, ripping that up, giving it a sort of rough edge and I'm going to take some of the paint and dab that onto, onto the miniature. So you can see here I've got the wet palette out which is uh, a dishcloth uh, soaked in water, not not too soaked, but uh, sort of reasonably saturated. And then I've got some uh, baking paper, parchment paper, there's loads of different names for it, but that's laid over the top, using cooking usually, and it's laid over the top of the, the dishcloth and through capillary action it takes the water through and keeps your paint moist. So I've taken some of that paint and I'm now going to just dab it uh, discreetly onto certain areas where I feel it will look good. Um, I'm overlaying some of the chips from before because again we're, we're trying to build up layers of weathering here. And I'm just going to go round the miniature uh, doing this as, as we go along, uh, just dabbing the paint into, into various parts of it. This is quite a, a fun stage um, and it, it feels like you're actually starting to get somewhere when you get to this, this point in painting the miniatures with this, these techniques. Um, it's a great effect, you can use it, you could use it in all sorts of miniatures for weathering. Um, it's, a, it's a real old school technique as well, I believe. Okay, now that that's done, uh, we're going to put what's called a filter on the miniatures. Normally that's done with uh, enamel type paints, but I'm using an acrylic here, uh, Bone White from Game Colour. And basically this is a, a very, very, very thin wash, essentially. Uh, you'll see here I'm using a really large flat brush and just putting this across the miniature. It's it's almost water at this point. Uh, the dilution on it must be about 90% water to 10% paint. But this is a really subtle effect. What it does is it gives more depth to the miniature. At the moment, it's looking quite flat. Um, even though you've got your paint chips in there, you're emulating your paint chips, you want it to have this... Um, you want to have some depth to the miniature and the filter will give it that. Um, it is a really subtle um, effect and uh, I think it'll be quite difficult for you to see uh, on the camera but I do have a shot coming up here which shows um, two of the, the bone jacks side by side again I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be difficult for you to see the one on the left has had its filter applied and uh, the one on the right is just about to get its filter um, so yeah, you probably can't see it there, but it is a stage that I go through. Okay, so we've completed the filter and all the, the jacks now, and I'm about to do more paint chipping. This time using the brush, because uh, the only problem with using the, the foam is sometimes, especially in small miniatures, it's quite difficult to get in amongst some of the areas so I take some of the paint that I used for that the last chipping process and I'm just using a very fine brush and I'm just feathering along some of the edges and putting some small dots on the panels where I think uh, it just requires that little bit more more chipping um, again this is a stage you could you could spend ages on if you really wanted to but my focus with this whole project is to get a, as, as good an effect as I think I can uh, in a reasonable amount of time. 
it has taken me a couple of months to paint these now, um, due to due to real life getting in the way. But this using all these techniques, you would hope to get this this army up and running within a week or two if you if you had the time. Um, so I'm just going round the miniature again uh, with the paintbrush and just a little bit of paint on, and I'm just catching some of the edges. Um, just taking quite often the very uh, the the edge of the brush around the tip in some places, and just bouncing it along the bouncing it along the edge of uh, some of the armor panels on the jacks. And you can see here on the hell jack, I'm just taking the paintbrush and just gently going along the edges here, just to pick out some more chips. Again, this is just another another layer, another layer of weathering. Um, it's increasing the the worn look, uh, the amount of time these machines are meant to have spent out in the open, getting battered with very little in the way of repair. Okay, so we've finished uh, paint chip step three or four I think it is now on the miniatures and I'm now going to use some obtuling oils from MIG and uh, some odorless thinner from AK Interactive and I'm going to mix them together and create a what would be called a pin wash in the model armour world. This is the effect of uh, bringing up uh, d sort of defining the armour panels is probably the best way to put it and all the little bolts and rivets that you'll have on the model so you can see here I've taken the the mixture uh, the artist oils and I'm just going round the miniature and picking out uh, areas where I want some more definition to do this you need to have one a good satin or gloss varnish coat on the miniature which you wouldn't have seen that step I didn't record that step but these models have all been coated again with varnish this is so that when you put the the oil mixture on the miniature it spreads out across the armour panels and the lines if you don't do that step it won't run as uh, easily into the uh, into the cracks between the different armour panels the second thing that you really need to be careful with with this process is that you really thin down the the chewing oils or the the artist oils with quite a lot of odorless thinner. Um, if you don't do that again, it won't run properly uh, across across the miniature. And I've I've seen a lot of people have issues with this. I've had issues in the past as well where it, it just doesn't seem to flow properly. A lot of people will use gloss varnish for this before this step I, I tend to just stick with satin uh, I've, I've always found I've got a good uh, good flow across the miniature with the satin varnish but the varnish itself tends to create a very smooth finish to the miniature and that's what you that's what you're looking for to get the, the oils to run not only does the pin wash give some depth to all the little rivets and bolts that you might have in the miniature. I'm also using it along the edges of the panels and this will give um, some shading to the miniature. And at the end you'll see just uh, it gives a really nice effect actually. In order to complete this effect I'm going to now take some just pure odorless thinners and some q-tips or cotton buds as they're called in the UK and I'm going to wet the the q-tip and then I'm going to use the damp q-tip and just take away any of the excess oils from the the miniature from the panel and say this way it's, it's gone too far I don't want it there and um, this also has the effect of feathering out the the oils. You can see that I'm also using a brush here uh, with just some of the old loose thinners on it just to just again to get into those areas where it's, it's a bit difficult for the q-tip to get in and just to feather it uh, the, the oils out a little bit more. 
Okay, so the next step is to do the metals, and I'm using Morlier Colour um, Gun Grey for this. Really simple step, just painting uh, slightly watered down paint all of the, the areas that I want to be metal on this model. Uh, nothing really to this. Model air paints are really good, they've got very, very fine pigments, um, which that means that the metals are, uh, are actually a joy to paint with compared to some companies. Um, so yeah, really just going round the, round the whole model here. Uh, it's a fairly lengthy step, this one, uh, especially in these models, there's a lot of very fine uh, metal details. But you've, you've just got to persevere and sometimes when you're doing this kind of chain painting, it's, uh, metallics especially can be one of the most time consuming and dare I say it, slightly boring steps. Um, you don't get quite the effect quite as quickly as you might do with other, other stages. But yeah, we'll just keep going around this model and um, picking out all the, the metallic details until, until they're done, ready for the next step. So once we've completed the metallics, I'm now going to give them a wash of Secret Weapon Sewer Water and Baby Poop, great name, uh, mixed together. And this will just give the metal areas a, a kind of nice dull, greasy almost look to them, which uh, will sort of be the base for, for the, the next weathering stages for the metals when we go on to do the rusts and uh, use some of the pigments that I'm going to use. So this is a really simple, fairly quick step. You're just painting all around the miniature and just make sure you get a nice even light coat across the whole of it. So that stage is now finished and you can see that the, the wash has given the metallics a, a, a kind of greasy, slightly yellowish tinge to it, almost slightly goldish in a, a golden in colour in a way. Um, but now it's time to do some of the first weathering layers on it and for that I'm using Citadel's uh, technical paint Risa Rust. Um, that's quite a thick paint this. But again, I'm going to use the same technique that I've used for chipping before and use some foam from the inside of a blister pack ripped up again to, to give us the, the sort of nice rough edge. So you can see here, really simple process, same as before, just going to go around the miniature uh, with uh, the paint and uh, using the foam and just dab on some uh, wee patches of rust onto the miniature. You want to be quite careful with this at this stage because this is quite a bright colour and I, I tend to do the brighter ones first because uh, I don't know, I think it gives a better look overall if I do a bright colour and then use the duller colours underneath even though the brighter rust it's probably the the most newest, uh, the newest rust that would have appeared on the newest oxidation on the, on the metals. I like the effect anyway. But as you can see, really simple again, just going round the miniature and dabbing on rust where where I feel it's appropriate. So here you can see the effect of just the Risa rust on the the metallics. Uh, but I want to build up more layers of colour, so now I'm going to use Scarfulous Brown and Charred Brown from Game Colour, the Vallejo range. And same process, just repeating it again. This time I'm going to just dab on quite often over the top of some of the, the very orange rust from the, the Risa rust stage. And uh, yep, yeah, just the same principle all over again. Again, this is all about building up layers of weathering to give it sort of depth and some more texture to the model. So you could you could skip this step, you could skip half the steps probably here, but I think the overall effect that you get at the end is is uh, really quite good. Again, like I did with the other paint chips, I've also at the end taken some time just to take a little bit of paint on the brush 
same colour that was just using there, uh, the scarfless brown and charred brown mix, and just going around picking out some areas where I wasn't able to get to with it, the foam. Again, using just a tip, just sort of bouncing across the miniature where I feel it's appropriate. So now I'm going to take some AK Interactive Rust Streaks. This is an enamel based paint, um, so try not to breathe in. I'm um, going to use this paint to create the sort of rust streaking effect on the metal, um, using it to sort of dull down areas of the metal, and I want the rust uh, patches that I put on before to maybe stand out a little bit more. Uh, using it in some of the, the areas where we've got bolts and uh, rivets, etc. But what you're essentially doing here is taking some of the rust streaks and just drawing it down the miniature as you can see me doing here and I'm also allowing it to pull in areas as I'm just below the exhaust stack on the jack here and this is the sort of the first stage in doing that so taking all the jacks in turn as usual and just working across just picking out the metal areas areas where I want the the rust to really come forward I'm also going to use some slimy grime uh, streaking uh, material from AK Interactive. Uh, this is a very green tone but this is going to give it a, 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 a nice finish when I feather it out using some odorless thinner in a minute. Almost exactly the same procedure. I'm not using this on the metals this time. I'm purely wanting to use this just on the sort of armour panels. So you can see I'm just going round again just drawing these lines down uh, and pay particular attention to the actual orientation of the miniature when you're doing this. It's quite easy sometimes when you're holding on to your holder to end up using uh, or to have the miniature at the wrong angle where actually the, the streaks wouldn't have flowed down or the water and the rain wouldn't have flowed down. So just like the obtuling oils in a previous step, what I'm doing here is just taking some odorless thinner and just feathering out all of the streaks that I've already put in. Simply using a brush and just wiping down and this, this uh, gives a really nice transition. It also takes some of the streaking grime, especially the, the slimy grime, and almost gives another filter to the to the, the paint job in the miniature which uh, I think provides quite a bit of depth and, and changes the colour quite dramatically actually. We go from having that very whitish base coat that we had before now to having something that's tinged with greens and oranges and again there's more depth there um, and it's just it's just a nicer effect really at the end of the day once it's completed so yeah just just moving around the miniature now just feathering out these little lines that I've created and move, moving from miniature to miniature And what you can see I'm doing here is just checking from a test model on the right to the, the model I've just painted and just making sure that I'm happy that the weathering looks reasonably consistent over them. There was a slight time lag of a, a few months between me painting the first miniature on the right and this one you see on the left now, but I think I've really managed to, to, to match what I did before. Okay, we're nearly finished now uh, with these models. I'm just putting on a, a satin varnish coat here just to uh, protect the, the, the uh, weathering that I just carried out there using the enamel paints. Um, they, they take a while to dry though, so you want to make sure you get a nice coat of uh, satin varnish. And actually, if there's, if there's any advice I could give, one of the most important bits when using all these different weathering products is to coat the miniatures with a, a nice thin coat of satin varnish just each time you finish one of these major procedures. Give it a chance to dry and then just hit it with a coat of varnish, let that dry and then move on again. It just protects uh, each layer of paint, each layer of weathering you put on. The last thing you want to do is use an enamel on top of some of the weathering uh, products like the, the oil that I've used and you're just going to end up pulling that material away as well. So just nice, nice coat of satin varnish each time. Okay, uh, just want to do some work now on the actual bone parts of the bone jacks. So taking bone white and leather brown and mix them together for a, a base coat. It was probably about, say, 30% leather brown to 
70% bone white. Uh, really simple step this, just painting this on. I need to apologise for the rest of this video. Don't know what I did, but I seem to have messed with the setting of my camera. I'd either zoomed in just that little bit too far, or I'd done something with the, tr the focus because the focus is a bit blurry uh, for the rest of this video, so I can only apologise for that. But carrying on, yeah, we're just working around the miniature here, uh, getting the, the base coat in for the bones, so nothing, nothing particularly difficult with this section. Now I'm taking some secret weapon washes, uh, the sewer water wash, and I'm going to just cover all the parts that are just base coated with this, uh, just to give a nice shade to the to the bone, and just bring out some of the detail of the, the teeth and the the rest of the sort of skull on these models. This is the, the sort of first highlight coat. You won't be able to see this bec very clearly because of the sort of fuzziness of this part, part of the video. But here I've just taken, uh, added a little bit more bone white to my bone white and leather brown mix. And I'm just going around picking out uh, the details, uh, some of the sort of raised edges on the, on the skull. Um, not going everywhere, I want to leave the shading in the recesses and the sort of base coat showing just after the, the shading. But I want to pick out the teeth. Uh, around the nose, around the eyes, uh, and yeah, just just uh, this the first layer of highlighting here. So now just to finish off uh, the highlighting on the, the skulls for the bone jacks, I'm just adding a little bit of model colour ivory to the mix, and I'm just going round and picking out the very sort of top edges of of uh, of the, the raised areas, uh, just to give it a little bit more definition to the model. Uh, it's a really, really simple step this, I've not gone too overboard with highlighting or shading. Uh, I used a tiny little bit of sort of wet on wet blending uh, towards the edge of the, the, sort of the, the, the big teeth on, on some of the bone jacks. But you can see here that's how it looks at the end, so it's quite, quite a simple technique, quite fast, uh, fairly rough, but just uh, gives a nice finish to the model. So this is the, the last stage in the process now uh, of putting the main paint layers on. I'm going to use Goblin Green here through my airbrush, uh, thin down a little bit with some um, thinners from Vallejo. And what I'm doing here is all the areas where I'd like to have a nice a green glow uh, coming out of the, the miniature, almost like it's its kind of reactor or whatever it is that uh, the Cricks have again. So I'm just taking the, the goblin green paint here and going round and spraying that and then I'm going to take some dead flesh and just spray uh, mostly sort of more in the middle of, of the areas um, where I want the glow to be uh, just to show it sort of brighter um, it's a kind of object source lighting effect and finally I use a little bit of bone white here sorry for the, the camera angles on this um, I was a little bit out of shot when I was doing these so just uh, not bone white, sorry, the um, ivory mixed in to the mix here and just just uh, catching it right in the middle. Now this looks very stark when you see it here, um, but I will be toning that down in just a moment uh, using some washes. It's quite a good technique this. Uh, unfortunately my airbrush, you can't take the end cap off so it makes it a little bit harder to um, to get the sort of detail on it. But here you can see where I am. Um, and what I've done here is I've taken the uh, sunshine and algae washes from Secret Weapon, mixed them together, and just uh, used them to dull down the, the starkness of the effect when she added the, the ivory over the over, as the last sort of highlight layer on it. And that, folks, is pretty much it. Um, here you can see the models as they stand at the moment. Um, that's the three bone jacks all complete, uh, all with their nice glow effects around the, the, the sort of power plant area. And yeah, that's that's basically all the jacks from a small army done now. Now you'll notice there are no um, bases on these models yet, and that's because I'm going to do the bases at the end 
uh, once I've got all the miniatures for the army painted. I'm using a material called Envirotex to, to create the sort of swamp bases that I would like for these miniatures and I, I, I want to do it all at once just so I maintain a sort of consistency. Here you can see the magnetization that I've done on the, the model. Uh, I can switch out the Helljack's heads for the uh, ones from the other kit that I have and I can switch the arms over so I can make um, different different jack variants depending on what I want to play with, what I want to, to try out. Um, I really like how these have turned out so far. I'm really quite happy with them. Um, but if you have any comments or any suggestions, then I would be more than happy to hear from you. The next video in this series is going to be the Mechanothrall unit that I'm going to paint. Uh, I'm going to use some of the same techniques, but there'll be a bit more brushwork, I think, on those. Um, I won't be able to use the airbrush as much, which is, is fine. I enjoy brush painting. And uh, yeah, so any comments? If you like the video, please hit like. If you'd like to subscribe, that would be really. Um, I'd really like that. Thank you very much if you do. Um, and I shall leave you in for now, folks. So take care and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.